All right, so I'm going to weigh in on another topic, something I know a little bit about, uh, something near and dear to me. And uh, actually, this came up because of something I saw on X. It's funny where I get these segments. I'll see something on social media. I'm like, that's a segment. Mm -hmm. And so I saw something about, um, in fact, I snatched one of the infographics. And uh, the infographic I commented on is actually in this this presentation. So um, this is a segment on is riding motorcycles safe and that's actually me and my daughter from this last weekend hey. um it was kind of cool so we did the texas hill country and they had these cameramen set up on these really famous like motorcycle like uh i don't want to say trails because not trails they're roads but they're rides rides yeah rides thank you robert and so like they had cameras and they had a little thing that said like the name it was i'll give them a shout out it was uh tx moto photo but photo was an f and so you go to the day that yeah. you were riding and you you, it's had to buy the type of bike and so i found the picture and you have to buy it but the picture's awesome man it's it like is, a great yeah. picture well really and to get that picture you got to get a friend or yeah and what was cool because like i saw them i i saw them like way up in the distance and yeah. i saw I, I elbowed my daughter's like hey thumbs up to these people on the side of the road <laughs> so it's like cool. kind of a cool picture right yeah. i'm making it a frame yeah. anyway great. so a surgeon reacts to is riding motorcycle safe and the answer is no. All right, segment over. Just kidding. <laughs> but I got more okay. information in that. Myth but, busted. Myth busted. Um, you know, I mean, I, I but I, I, you know, I, I, I am going to say that riding motorcycles is not necessarily a safe hobby. But there's a but. You can make it reasonably safe. Right. And so I've actually looked all this stuff up before, and I'm surprised I haven't done a segment on this in the past. Um, because this is actually really good information uh, if you have interest. Now, let me ask you guys. Either you ride motorcycles. I think I know the answer for you, Robert. You, you haven't, right? Because I've tried to get you to – I talked about you riding so, a trike or something. So my thing is I've never – really yeah. ridden them and we'll talk so about that in a minute i'm yeah. not gonna go hop on yeah, 635 but, yeah that would be well yeah that'd be bad yeah and so that's my it's definitely a, a good fear you know yes um, it is a good fear unlike my roommate in college who actually i remember totaled that my my, yeah, that my was, prize bike that in college was beautiful was totaled you, by my friend would you say it was yellow or yeah, it was cold? yellow it was oh, yellow it was ninja, right? arrest me yellow yeah, yeah it was arrest oh, me yellow man. ninja <laughs> I love so, that bike, dude. You know, it was so easy to like pick up girls in college with that bike. There you go. Like, there you go. And and I know people that have done motocross. I mean, their kids yeah. rode a motorcycle before they rode a bike. Yeah. You know, like a real bike or right, right, whatever. Right. How long have you been riding? Uh, so, well, I got my motorcycle license at 15 because you okay. could get it back at 15. But I was riding for probably three years before that. Okay. So, so well, I've been riding, I mean – 37 years yeah pretty consistently i had one stretch so in my general surgery residency i went to this very notoriously malignant hardcore surgery program and the guy that was the uh chairman who's like enormously famous surgeon like if I, his name's hiram polk and i'm sure you guys never heard of him but like in the surgery world the guy's like you know debakey right right he's like right. up there the hard guy. he uh he said if he ever caught any of his residents on a motorcycle he would fire him on the spot so I, I sold my bike before I went to residency, Smart. and I, I, I didn't buy one when I was up there. But So there that for go. five years, I didn't have a bike. Well, it was Man. a little longer than that. Right. Um, what about you, Travis? You ever ridden a motorcycle? I've never. Well, so I've ridden a motorcycle, like, as a passenger. Never, as a like, passenger? Yeah, okay. never right. driven one myself. But gotcha. But as a, as a kid and as an adult, I'm not going to lie, like a young adult, I used to always want a motorcycle. Yeah. And I still kind of do to this day. I always say when well, I get married, I'll get We're going to talk about the right way to do it. <laughs> Um, cause I have pulled all the data on this and it is a little scary at first. And I'm going to throw up the infographic that, uh, kind of spawned this segment. Can you throw it up there, Travis? It's basically talking about the fatality rate per hundred million passenger miles. And so this is in, you know, uh, you know, data type format, but the, the take home from this, and this one's kind of extreme, but the take home is, is that if you're riding a motorcycle, you're 28 to 40 times more likely to die than if you're driving a car. Okay. That's a pretty big number, okay? Um, it, it Statistically, it's very dangerous uh, comparatively to other forms of travel. And, of course, you know, the question is why, and it's obvious you're not protected. Right. You know, if you get hit in a car, like the, the chassis and the frame of the car protect you from getting squished. In a motorcycle, you have no such thing. Right. Um, but there is good news. Um, there is a way to decrease this... 28 to 40 times more likely to die down to about four times. So you can mm. dramatically decrease that risk of death. 
And the way you do that is to understand the statistics behind motorcycle crashes, what causes them, and what are the circumstances that involve motorcycle fatalities. And this data is readily available. Um, and I've pulled right. it up multiple times. I, I, I think I did a TikTok about it. Um, uh, I don't know, a couple, three or four years ago, like before the show ever started. And so I pulled all that data and I just pulled it again. And it hasn't really changed. So I want to go through it with you. So a little okay. bit of background data. Every year in the United States, four to 6,000 motorcyclists are get killed, about 80 to 100,000 injured. And the death rate has gone up. In the past decade, the death rate's gone up about 20%. Uh, I think I got an infographic if you guys want to see it. Uh, yeah, here it is. So this has the injured and killed uh, from the NHTSA uh, past 10 years. So uh, deaths are slightly rising, slightly. Um, yeah, year to year. It's gone about 20% in the last 10 years. And so, you know, the question is, why has it gone up? Well, uh, there have been the repealing of some helmet laws in some states, uh, which we'll talk about why that's important. Right. And then also, too, I think that the popularity is increasing. You know, yeah, the more the, say more people, the more people that ride, the more yeah. crashes there's going to be, the more Absolutely. people are going to die. More people on the road. Yeah. Um, so what are the risk factors? Um, well, and, and you guys both just tapped on it um, just a second ago. Uh, number one is either untrained or inexperienced riders. Almost 40% of motorcycle fatalities, the rider did not have a, a license. Oh. That's pretty high. I mean, you know, m most motorcyclists have licenses. Most people do. But of the people who die, almost half did not. And so kind of going to you guys, like, and I'm not at all encouraging either one of you to get a motorcycle. Um, because as soon as I do that, someone will get one and kill themselves, and I'd feel really terrible. Yeah. But if you were going to go about doing it, um, you absolutely, absolutely want to go and do a course, uh, which I didn't do. So I didn't do this, but I, I just had a very odd circumstance where my dad purchased some very low power motorcycles and we had a very big open space yeah. that we could ride. And I learned that way. And, you know, and I crashed a few times, but, you know, I crashed at low speed. Right. I wasn't in traffic. I was literally yeah. around no cars. And that's how I basically got the mechanics down. Right. And then I, I actually took the, I got my, you know, I got my original motorcycle license, which was kind of like a, like, I think I was limited to 150 cc's when I was 15. Right. And then at 16, I had to retake the test to get the big boy license or whatever. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to go about getting the license, you really, there's a ton of courses out there. They supply the bikes. You don't have to have a bike. And it's like classwork and it's riding. And you go through these courses and there's different levels of them yeah. to get the basics down and the intermediates. Because, you know, I mean, it's just so important because riding a motorcycle is not like driving a car. Like it is completely different. You know, they're all, yep. for the most part, standards, which, you know, I mean, I assume you know how to drive a standard. Yeah. Travis, I mean, can you drive a standard? This is a good question. Can Travis drive a standard? <laughs> I cannot. You can't? I can't. Oh my God. We got to teach you. Come on, that. man. Well, but, Dude, but I'm going to bring in... my blazer up here. I'm going to teach you how to drive a stand. We're going to do that and we're going to video it. They're not in cars anymore. I mean, you they know. are not. You, oh so my it's like God. how do you learn? They're not. My mom well, could drive one, but I, I cannot. Wow. Yep, yep. That's just crazy. I keep hearing that, that people can't drive standards these days. Like, that can't be <laughs> yeah. true. That can't be true. Nope. My first car was a standard. Well, I mean, or we had a buddy that had one, and you're like, In fact, drive. I've had more stand. My my daily driver is that old beat-up truck, and that yeah. is an automatic, but only because they didn't have a standard in that vehicle that I wanted. Yep. I've had one other car that was an automatic besides my truck. I've had more uh, standards than automatic. Yep. I like standards. I like row. I call it row your own. You yeah, know, row your absolutely. own. Absolutely. Um, how did I get talking? You know, oh, like, because the bikes. I was like, why am I? Yeah. Why am I on this tangent? Well, and some people yeah. don't understand. It's like first gear is what, and uh, yeah, and so it's and like one. So yeah, it's like one stalling. down, five up. Like, and yeah. of course, you know, and if you fall, like that's potentially dangerous. Yeah. So I, I think if you're going to go about getting one, absolutely 100 percent do the training course. And get your license. Um, I mean, getting license is kind of formality because I'm not sure that getting my license really, you know, helped me. Right. But it but it meant that I at least went through the proper channels to do it. Right. So inexperienced, untrained drivers, 40% of um, fatalities. Okay, the big one, obviously, not wearing a helmet is terrible. 40 to 55%, depending on you know which studies you look at, of fatalities had no helmet on. That's enormously high. Yeah. Super high because most people wear helmets. And, but the biggest percentage, well, or at least half of the people that die are not wearing helmets. Um, Texas is no helmet state, 
which I this is gonna sound weird. I'm against helmet laws. Uh, I'm a very like you know live and let live kind of person. If you don't want to wear a helmet, like I'm not gonna force you to do it. But right. I think you're insane if you don't wear a helmet. Right. I mean, I I, I know it wasn't a friend of mine, but a friend of my father in law's died in like a 10 mile per hour crash because he he got hit or i can't remember how it went down but he fell off his bike at a very low speed and the first thing that hit the the ground was the back of his head yep. and he got a brain bleed and he died at like five miles an hour yeah i mean and think about going 30 40 50 miles an hour if you don't have a helmet on like your chance of dying is extremely high because your head's heavy it like wants to hit the ground first right, right? the heaviest right. part wants to go down yeah and when your head hits the ground you, you have a high chance of dying right so i i am absolutely religious about wearing a helmet I, I i the only thing i will not wear helmets if i literally move my bike from the garage to the driveway that's like it if i'm going a block down the road i'm wearing a helmet i also wear armor um i wear i always wear a kevlar jacket um and if i'm traveling like on a trip i always wear kevlar pants hey will you pull that picture up again travis can you if which it's one easy the uh picture of him and danica because yeah. I want to see, I mean, yeah, like, Danica's got armor on too. She doesn't have yeah. armor on her legs, which I feel kind of bad about that, but it's hard to find pants. But that, that white jacket, that's actually my wife's jacket, which is crazy because my daughter can wear it. Right. But like the, uh, the arms and the, uh, the shoulders are all, are Kevlar. Right. Um, as is mine. That's my, my you favorite. You can kind of see it too. Yeah. yeah it yeah. looks like shoulder pads, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, and then the, the pants I'm wearing too, those are, those are Ducati pants, but they're also Kevlar. Um, and then it's got right. shin pads, like hockey pads in the front. Well, even wearing the boots and everything yeah. you know i mean it's yeah like, gloves are important like i feel bad because i wear fingerless gloves but i just don't like fingered gloves um so i i wear i think it is really smart like you said yep. though to take a course um for it I, yeah. I actually stay like right across the street from where they train i guess in this parking lot hmm. yeah I oh really and, and until you said that just now it didn't hit me that they were out there taking a course on how to drive yeah. i thought it was like that's yeah. you getting your license yeah so wearing helmet, uh, protective gear, another big one, excessive speed. Over one third of motorcycle fatalities are due to speeding. Right. Um, and you know, I get it. Motorcycles are way overpowered. Like, you know, I mean, there's motorcycles. I just bought a new bike and things got more horsepower than a lot of cars I've owned. Like they're insane and they weigh nothing. Yep. And it's really easy to like, let them get ahead of you. And you can, you know, go to get on the freeway and you're doing 110. And you're like, whoa, how the heck did I get going right. this fast? Well, it's because things are like overpowered. Yep. Um, so you have to avoid, you know, driving like a numbskull. You know, you don't drive it like you stole it. Be smart. Alcohol, big one. Almost 30% mm -hmm. of most psychophilies in include alcohol. Drinking and driving a car is, is literally idiotic. Right. Drinking and driving a motorcycle is just suicidal. I mean, if you impair your motor skills and you got on a motorcycle, I don't know why, I don't know how anyone would get, make it home. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes skill and balance to ride a motorcycle. If yeah. you're drunk, like you're going to die. Right. Here's another one that a lot of people don't think of driving at night. Uh, throw up that next infographic there, Travis. Mm. This talks, this shows like when um, people uh, die in motorcycles. So if you look at that, over half of the motorcycle fatalities occur between 6 p.m and 9 a.m. So it'd be evening or nighttime. Um, and, and and I understand this one because as, especially as you get a little bit older, like your night vision starts to go. Yeah. And like, you know, little things like stuff running out in the road or cars, like cars can't see you, you can't see them. Right. I, I will drive at night, but I don't like it. When I plan a trip, I always try to be where I'm at by dusk right because it is absolutely statistically true that driving at night is much more dangerous. Well, and that's what I was gonna say. It's like other cars, not seeing you mm. on a motorcycle yeah. you may have so to, even driving i mean same thing you got to look and check yeah. and double check but they so may not see you. and this is a this is a tip that i'm going to give people if you're going to get a bike like every single one of my bikes has an aftermarket pipe why hmm. well one they're cool i like i like the sound of them but two i like a loud bike i want people to know i'm ah. coming and i know i'm going and like i don't care if you know sense. i don't care if it, it irritates the neighbors like a motorcycle that's loud is a motorcycle that someone knows is at least around. And so uh, every one of my bikes is, is all got aftermarket pipes because stock pipes generally are not loud. Well, that makes sense because I've been in the car before and like one will be on you and you don't hear it. Yeah, you don't hear it. Yeah. Or even walking around the neighborhood or mm -hmm. whatever with the yeah. Teslas and you're like, oh. That's you can't even hear those things. Yeah. No, which is great, kind of. Mm -hmm. But I, I like being able to hear them. You know, yeah, yeah it's, you know, yeah. flexing your muscles, but that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, all right, driving in urban areas. Over two thirds of motorcycle fatalities occur in urban areas versus suburban hmm. or rural areas. 
So it's much more dangerous to drive in big cities than it is in suburbs. Yeah, or and some of that, some of that too, is that's where the people are concentrated. Right. Some of that is you know just due to that's where people are. Um, but to go along with that, um, you know, it's funny. I just there's a girl that I work with. Um, Hey, Rachel, if you're watching, uh, she drives bikes, and she was telling me the other day that she, she has a bike, but she's scared to get on the freeway. Statistically, that's the safest place to be. 92% of motorcycle fatalities occur on non-interstate roads. Interesting. Interstates are generally one of the safest places because, and going on to the next uh, thing, one of the absolute most dangerous places for a motorcycle to be is an intersection. Intersections are insanely dangerous. One third of all motorcycle fatalities occur at intersections, even though intersections are a tiny percentage of the total right. road that you drive on. And so when you look at all those things that contribute to motorcycle fatalities, if you can avoid these, which you can't, I mean, you can't avoid going to an intersection, but you can be hyper cautious at an intersection. And I want to tell you guys a tip, and I didn't invent this, although I've always done this my entire life, but there are people out there that kind of talk about this more, and, it, and it's, it's called driving invisible. I literally drive a motorcycle like no one can see me. I always expect that someone's going to pull out in front of me. Good point. When I'm like going through an intersection, I always cover my brake. And so what that means by covering your brake is you have your hand on your brake and you're ready to apply it instantaneously. You don't have to like do the hand shift and like you're you're expecting someone to pull out in front of you. You're always watching, you're always vigilant. And I mean even doing that you still can get hit, but like you're much less likely to get hit. If you're driving that bike, like you feel like no one can see you. And okay. I've done that my whole life. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to jinx myself, but I mean, I have a pretty good track record. Well, and that's what I tell my kids. Like, yeah, they're supposed to stop for you when you walk across the road. We're talking about right. something different. But it's the same principle. But expect them yep. not to Expect stop. the unexpected. So yeah. do not go across yeah. and think they see you. Make that eye contact. Yeah. And good job. I like it. All right. So I just want to do a quick summary on this segment that we did today on... Is it safe to ride motorcycles? Well, it's not really safe to ride motorcycles. However, if you know what causes motorcycle crashes and fatalities, you can decrease that risk to a what I think is an acceptable risk. And so one of the most important things is you have to wear a helmet. Uh, if you don't wear a helmet, your chance of dying goes up dramatically. Get a license and get properly trained. Inexperienced riders make up a huge amount of motorcycle fatalities. Avoid alcohol. That should go without saying. Driving a motorcycle under the influence of alcohol or drugs is a way to get killed. Avoid driving at night. That's, not, that's one not a lot of people know about. Over half of motorcycle fatalities occur in the evening or nighttime. Avoiding urban areas if possible. About two-thirds of motorcycle fatalities occur in big cities versus suburbs or rural areas. Avoiding excess speed. Motorcycles like to go fast, but about a third of all motorcycle fatalities include excessive speed. And then uh, finally, avoid, uh, having extreme caution at intersections. A lot of motorcycle fatalities occur at intersections, even though that's a small percentage of your riding time. And the final tip is, if you're going to ride a motorcycle, drive like you're invisible. Act like no one can see you. Anticipate that everyone might be out to run into you. And if you're that vigilant, you can make it pretty safe. So, Good to hear. I like that. Right. I'm going to remember the driving invisible. That's a cool thing. I wish yeah. I could say I invented that. I, you know, and I didn't hear about that before I kind of came up with that. Yeah. But then as someone, I don't, I don't know if I would have called it driving invisible. I would have said drive like everyone's out to kill you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then I saw a video of somebody saying mm -hmm. drive invisible. I'm like, oh, that's pretty, I should have yeah. done that video 10 years right. ago. Right. I'd be rich or something. So. Smart.